Welcome everyone to tutorial 11 and in tutorial 11 we will be talking about normalizing flows, specifically here on image modeling. So lecture 11 will give you an introduction to normalizing flows and also to the topic on image modeling. This is because all generative models first start often on image modeling. This is a task we know as a network, so we know that for example CNNs are very good in image detection while also in, uh, images allow us to use them as continuous or as also discrete inputs. So it's easier actually to decide for ourselves what we want to use for a model. This tutorial is also designed to give you a small introduction to normalizing flows. So in case you have not watched the lectures yet, it is not uh, too bad. So I will try to still make this tutorial uh, self-explainable without the need to first have studied the lectures in detail. So the first cell is again just a simple um, our imports as usual and below we have here again uh, some pre-trained models which we download. When I talk about now image modeling, something we have to consider is that normalizing flows are also likelihood model. So I will go into a bit detail later, but in general normalizing flows model a likelihood of images similar to a VAE. So GANs don't do that right away, normalizing flows actually allow that. However, we want to do the task a little bit more difficult than in the VAE of your assignment. Uh, so in the assignment you have binarized MNIST, right? so it's either 0 or 1. However, here we make it a bit more difficult, namely we use 8-bit values, so which is actually how MNIST is stored. So each pixel value is between 0 and 255, and these are also the integers we consider. And this is then the images we want to um, want to model, and this is why we use here a function discretize to discretize basically our data. Again, just a good practice is to look at some images, and as you can see here, it's just a simple amnest as you know it. Let's first start with discussing what is a normalizing flow in general. Normalizing flow models the likelihood of a data set. So as any other generative model we have seen, which are on the explicit likelihood modeling side. However, um, the difference to a VAE, for example, is that we learn a one-to-one -one correspondence of the two space, so the data space, and the latent space. How does the normalizing flow does that? So you know below here, for example, a VAE. A VAE uses input, uh, encoder, probably uh, has a lower dimensional latent space and then again upscales with a decoder. A normalizing flow, however, takes the input and applies a function, which is here a flow, maps it to z, and to go the other way, we can just inverse the function. So we take f minus one to actually map z again back to x. What does that mean? Well, that means that we have to learn invertible functions. So that our encoder and decoder here is actually the same function, just to run with a different direction. At the same time, as this function must be invertible, it means that for each x we know a z, and for each z we know a x. Therefore, we have here one-to-one -one correspondence, which is often very helpful in applications, as you can now do also interpolation in latent space without the difficulty that you also have, like in a VAE, that your decoding of this latent point might not actually be correct or precise. Normalizing flows also then have a difficulty of designing a function f here, which is invertible, which we will also go into detail a bit. However, maybe what is first a good thing is to discuss how do we model a distribution here. So x is, for example, the image of 28 times 28 pixels. z would be then the same uh, size, so also 28 times 28, and represents here a Gaussian distribution. So we no, compared to a VAE, we need the latent space to have the same dimensionality as the input. Otherwise, we cannot invert actually the function. We have then the Gaussian on this prior here, and we say, okay, this prior z is a Gaussian distribution. How can we now actually model p of x here with the invertible function and our knowledge of the prior distribution? The trick for this is called uh, the rule of change of variables and it's actually relatively simple to derive. So as you know, we have as a probability distribution, if we just take the integral, 
we have to be one, right? Because the probability density, the volume under it must be one, otherwise it's not the density. What we can then just do is simple math, um, well, changing of the size of d of x, and we derive then that p of x is p of z of this point mapped to the z space, and here a derivative of a function divided by d of x. So this is everything we already need for calculating now the uh, probability of a point in x given that we have p of z and this function f. We can also do it in a uh, multivariate case, so this is for a univariate case. You can also just write it in a multivariate case where you add, for example, here the log. Because then usually we train on the log like that, right? The difference to VAE here you see is that we first of all don't have an elbow. So if we actually model the exact likelihood because we have a one-to-one -one correspondence of x and z. While we also have here now a term with it, which is derivative. So in the multivariate case, this is actually a Jacobian over which we take the determinant. This can be a bit complex for any possible invertible function. Therefore, we often design our functions f here to be relatively simple that we can invert it. Maybe to take a step more back is, okay, what is actually then the flow doing? So what are flows doing intuitively compared to a VAE? Because a VAE can be seen as the input compressing into a latent space over which we have the um, distributions and decompressing. Normalizing flow, however, can be seen as mapping one distribution to another. So we do transformations on the probability density so that we have as output again a probability density. Let's, for example, take a very simple uh, function as f. So for example, f can be 2x plus 1. So we map p of x here to p of y, uh, which is because of visualization, but you can imagine this is also p of z. So we have here a uniform distribution given, and if we now apply this f, which is invertible, right, because we just scale and take a bias, we actually change the probability density. So from 0 to 1, we actually transform this probability that is between 1 and 3. However, you also see that, well, the volume has to stay constant. Right? So if I would just now uh, take, you see that, for example, here the height is 1, and here the height is 0 0.5. If I just would come up here and say, okay, p of x is p of z, where the point is, well, you see that this cannot be a probability density anymore. This is where the scaling factor comes in, and this scaling factor here, this derivative, makes sure that even after complex transformation, we still have a valid probability density with a volume of 1, if we have started with a volume of 1. So what the flow in the end actually is doing is that we apply multiple invertible functions, because an invertible function, if I take two invertible functions, add them together, they are still invertible, right, because I can invert each of them separately. And what we finally do is that we actually transform then the simple prior, so the simple Gaussian, step by step in a more complex distribution until we come to P of x. So we can, for example, define, okay, we have 10 flow layers. We start with a Gaussian distribution and apply our 10 flows. And the output distribution should model P of x. And we train then these functions, these f, to uh, transform the input density of p of x stepwise into p of, uh, p of z, our Gaussian prior. Meanwhile, we do not need to know the exact density already of p of x, because this is what we learn, right? So we, for example, have given again a data set of MNIST, which represents samples in our data set, and we train again the network by increasing the likelihood for the points in the data set. So we use simple maximum likelihood estimate to train our invertible functions so that they can map the points in the data set to high likelihood points in the prior distribution and hopefully generalize. If we now want to uh, sample, so this is for density estimation, right? So how likely is a point? If we now want to sample, we could just sample from Z, inverse all our flows and get X a sample out of X in case we have modeled x uh, precisely. Otherwise, we get, of course, a sample of our modeled distribution. There you see that normalizing flows have quite 
some uh, benefits. So we have an exact likelihood estimate compared to VAEs. However, we also have a fast uh, sampling and fast density estimation because we can just take the flows. The flows are usually, for example, a C and N as a complexity of running. And there you see that we can actually just invert all the layers, which is and also efficient, so that uh, normal learning flows are good in both sampling and fast density estimation.